Welcome to the Kingdom Cometh Radio broadcast on the Kingdom Influencers Radio, where we are sounding the alarm for the chosen and the call for Christ to make aware in the earth that God is soon to come, establishing the timelines of the Word of God. No man knows the day nor the hour that the Son of Man shall return, but the Father. Matthews 24, 36. Revelations 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with the cloud, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am your host, Apostle Cheryl Burke, CEO of Ambassadors of Integrity and Power Internet, International Ministries, where we are building kingdom leaders. God bless you again. Welcome to the Kingdom Cometh Radio Broadcast. Our topic on today will be, Be Prepared, Matthews 24, verses 9 through 13. Now, there are many things we as a people, those of us that are in the church, that we are yet to prepare for. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you on today. We thank you for your word because your word come that we might live. Your word come that we might be prepared for what's to come. So God, as we go into your word and we line it up with the times of the event, God, we prepare ourselves to meet you when you come. And so God, we thank you as we prepare the people and we prepare the body of Christ of the signs of the time. Let us also be prepared in all that you say and that you are informing us about through your word. God, you said you're coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. Let us be that church that you're coming back for. So we thank you and we praise you on today in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I want to say thank you and welcome on today for Be Prepared, Matthews 24, verses 9 through 13. I would like for you to share this on your social media platform, text, or email someone so that they can join in on another powerful discussion. Come on, the kingdom cometh. And I, I, I am out here just to inform you through the word of God that Jesus is soon to come. So you can leave your comments or any prayer requests. You can call in. We'll be looking for those questions and those comments. So Come on, let us get into this discussion. Let's get into the Word of God. Matthews, the 24th chapter, verses 9 through 13. Let's get into this Word of God. This is, uh, again, our third episode on the Kingdom Cometh Radio, and I am glad that you are joining us. And I'm just trying to get us to realize that uh, it's not a lie. Jesus is coming back. And that we got to begin to see what's taking place in the earth. We got to begin to see what God is saying and what he is doing. Now we're telling the people of everywhere where God's going to bless him and God's going to keep him and God's going to do this. But do we realize that the things that are taking place in this earth, he is also warning us to come together, to spread the gospel, to get it together, because these are the things that's going to begin to take place in the earth before he returns. And so as we get into this word of God, we're going to break it down line upon line and precept upon precept, as some of us may say. So let's get into this word of God on today. Matthews 24 verses 9 through 13. And I'm reading from a King James Version Bible, and the scripture reads, verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, 
and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And sometimes I think we wonder why we go through what we go through with people and why we endure what we endure because of the word of God. Everybody's saying, well, why do they always come against the Christians? Why do they always, they could talk about any other, you can't talk about any other culture or any other religion, uh, but, but they could just talk about the Christians and just slay Jesus name and they can do this and do that when it comes to uh, the body of Christ. It's because he's telling you in this word, it ain't just not happening. They hated Jesus, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They hated Jesus. They still trying to bring his name down even right now today, but seem like it's getting more and more where you can't even wear a t-shirt to work with the name of Jesus on it. On TV, on these sitcoms, a lot of them can't say Jesus. They can't say God. Our children can't even pray out loud at the school in the name of Jesus. And so a lot of people are getting canceled, as they say. Because they're representing the name of Jesus or the culture has come against you uh, when you pray in Jesus name. Do you understand? And so he's letting you know that they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. You're going to be talked about, scandalized, uh, and they shall kill you. Sometimes it's not physically, but sometimes it is physically. We need to go into these other countries uh, where they cannot even, you know, acknowledge the name of Jesus. They can't even acknowledge that, that Jesus is Lord. I know there are countries like Russia and the UK. There are different countries where you can't even acknowledge it. I met a woman of God in Switzerland and I talk about Pastor Virginia is because when she was in Switzerland and I met her, she was down in her basement. And I kept wondering why it was so dark down there in the basement. Why she seemed like she was in a cubby, you know, talking to me, virtual chatting with me. It's because where she's located in Switzerland, they cannot name the name of Jesus. My God, the Muslims and different ones are taking over and, and they want you to believe what they want you to believe. They want you to do what they want you to do. So we as the body of Christ need to realize uh, that we got to keep pushing the name of Jesus while we got a chance. Because I believe it's going to get worse and worse. While you worrying about it now, it's going to get worse and worse. So you better know if they saying to not pronounce the name of Jesus, you're going to get killed because of the name of Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake of all nations. You think it's just your family or your friends or those people who you don't, don't hate you? Baby, that is just the beginning of your hate. And if you're not able to endure that, how are you going to endure when nations is going to begin to come up against And you're not going to be able to name the name of Jesus. My God, that's why he said you better have this word in your heart. Uh, come on, because after a while, the book is going to be gone. They're going to demolish the book. We look at some of these uh, stories, like the book of Eli and all of that, and you don't believe that that stuff is true where he was out searching for the Bible. The Bible was of null and void. I don't think we really think about what they are saying to us. How this world is going in a direction, if we don't be careful, we not going to be prepared. We got to be prepared for what's coming ahead. We got to prepare ourselves. We got to prepare our children. We got to prepare the people that these things are about to come to pass. And the more and the more I look at the events that's taking place in this earth, I realize that we as the body of Christ need to be prepared. Why are you worried about somebody just talking about you? Are you worried about this, that, or the other that really does not make any sense? You better worry about how this word is being laid out in the current events. That's what we need to be worried about. Okay, so let's go further into the scripture. Verse 10 says, and then shall many be offended. What? 
You can't even name the name of Jesus. You can't even tell people what the word of God says because they're offended. You can't talk about people's lifestyle. You can't talk. Come on. You can get sued. I remember being in a service and they was telling me, uh-uh, you can't film this on this platform. And you can't film that because you know what? We could get sued. We could get sued for praying for people. We could get sued for the power of God coming on people and they're hitting the floor. We could get sued. Well, my God, they're going to be offended to see the move of God. And that's where we are in today's time, where people are getting offended because you're calling on the name of Jesus. People are getting offended. Offended, but because people are getting set free and delivered, people are getting offended. So you mean to tell me I can't even pray for people no more? I can't even, come on, I got to be careful what I say to people. I got to allow myself to do what the government says do concerning people, concerning relationships, concerning what you know, they can do in the church and what they cannot do in the church. Then they shall, come on, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another? My God, I've seen that. I've seen that in the church. I've seen people go, and then guess what? They're going to betray you not just with with family and friends. They're going to betray you with the governmental system, and they're going to tell the government what's going on in your church. And and it ain't so much about money, not because see some of these churches and ministries who are really not doing right come on they they telling you what they're doing and how they're doing it and what they're doing behind closed doors and i truly believe that a lot of it god is exposing because the word of god is going to come forth the word of god will not be a lie and it will come to pass he said that they shall betray one another and shall hate one another I don't understand this. We're all on one accord. We're all moving toward the same goal. I hope we are. That it's about souls. It ain't about your number. It ain't about how many people you got. It ain't how big your offering is. I pray that we all are on one accord about adding souls to the kingdom. I pray that we are all on one accord about people being set free and delivered and it ain't a name game it ain't about you having a big name it ain't about how big your congregation or how big and beautiful your building is about how you got people following you i pray that it's about souls because i promise you when jesus come back my god he really is going to be concerned about how many have you can held uh, to come to the kingdom the bottom line is come on how many have you compelled uh, to come to christ he ain't gonna ask you about how big your chapel was he ain't gonna ask you about how big your bank account was he's not gonna he's gonna be wondering who did you tell about me and who was delivered because you allow me to use you that's what god is going to be concerned about my god and hate one another come on we hating on each other because we feel like uh, well they don't deserve to be this and they don't deserve well they ain't got our qualities and they ain't got you know they ain't on our level and they that does not matter are you living right are you preaching kingdom are you compelling men and women to come to christ Uh, that's what it's going to be about we have to be prepared are you prepared if god come now that you can say okay god i did what you told me to do now the sad thing about it is that he's going to say depart from me you workers of iniquity i know you not but you're going to see but i preached in your name i prophesied in your name i did this in your name yeah you did all of that but you was not living my word you was not prepared for me you did not prepare yourself in the word of god that is the difference 
that's going to be the difference. So my prayer today is that you allow God to move on your heart and you stop worrying about big numbers, big people, how many, you know, what you look like, who know your name, because it ain't about who knowing your name. It's about the kingdom. And I look at the body of Christ. I look at those that are in leadership and I look at what they're doing and I can almost tell, you can tell. <laughs> That they just worried about people having a bunch of people under them, having a big following. Now, they don't care about how people live. And people can live any way they want to live as long as they come to the covenants, uh, this and the holy convocation, that. And as long as they show up in the numbers and as long as they dress appropriately and as long. No, but you got to tell people how to live right. I would rather you live right if you never come in uniform. But I want your life to be according to God's word. My God, I want to know that you are living it. So when Jesus come, you'll be prepared to go back with him. My God, that's the bottom line. I want to make it. I want you to make it. I want you to know that he's soon to come. I want you to know that he said, be ye holy for I am holy. I want you to know that you can walk right. He sent his son to show us that it could be walked out. We make all kinds of excuses and we begin to live doctrine instead of the word. But we live our doctrine. Come on. We don't live the word. We teach people our doctrine and what we think and how we want things to line up. Teach people God's word. Prepare God's people through his word, not through your doctrine. Now how you want to look. Now how the people supposed to look. My God. Come on now. And sometimes when I think about when people tell me about their vision. So now my thing is, does your vision line up with the word of God? Is your vision about preparing people to meet the Lord? Is your vision preparing people how to live right? That's what my prayer is. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for your number. I'm not looking for all your degrees. I'm not looking for how many years you've been preaching and how many and all of that. I'm looking for the word of God. Is it being orchestrated in your life? Verse two, verse uh, 11 says, and many false prophets shall rise. How many false prophets have we seen that we are hearing right now? And guess what? They sound almost right. Come on. He said, even the righteous can be fooled. Come on. Those, the very elect. So we got to be careful. We got to know. It's not just knowing the scripture. You know, it's about discerning the spirit. He said, try the spirit by the spirit. <clears throat> my God, my God. And many false prophets shall rise. You got to be able to distinguish between the false and the true. The, a diamond and out of a zirconian. You can, you can, you. Be able to tell the difference. There are a lot of blingy, blingy, bling, bling. Uh, but are they real? Are they real? My God. Many false prophets shall rise up and shall deceive many. As long, some people, and it's so sad, as long as you preaching them a blessing message, as long as you preaching them about a big house, a new car, as long as you preaching about God called them uh, and you're not preparing them to live right and to live the word of God, uh, they find them. But the minute you begin to prepare them to live right, uh, come on, to walk in God's word, to deal with those issues in their life, uh, they don't want to hear that. I remember me and the man of God uh, having a a saint to come tell us, uh, I can't deal with y'all ministry because y'all make me deal with real life issues. My God, you know why? It's because we want you to be ready when Jesus comes. We want that word to come uh, and rectify some things in your spirit. Uh, so then when he comes, uh, you'll be found without spot and wrinkle. That's why. 
And sometimes we want to deal with stuff, but we don't want to deal with the stuff that we have in our heart. We want to just skip over it and shout over it and sing over it. No, baby, let's deal with it. Let's line it up according to the word of God, because when he come back, he's looking for the five wise. My God, the five foolish missed out. Yeah, you're going to hear me represent. Uh, referring back to them many, many of the broadcasters is because there's a message in that. Be prepared. The wise was prepared. The foolish was not prepared. But they went to church. They went to Bible study. They looked like they had church. They looked just like a virgin like the five wise did. But was they prepared to meet the bridegroom? No. Come on. And verse 13. 11 verse 12 says and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound because you still want to do it the way you want to do it because you still think what you're doing is right because you still think well God understand uh, well you know I'm only human uh, well you know what I, I can pray and God will forgive me because you think uh, you could just escape uh, no because iniquity is abounding because you're allowing it to abound you're allowing yourself to sit in it the love of many shall wax cold you want to halfway love somebody. I can love them, but I ain't got to deal with them. How can you love with somebody and not deal with them? It's no way. I can love you, but I ain't got to like you. No, I don't like to sin, but I'm going to love that person. I'm going to be there for that person. I'm going to pray for that person. Who I'm going to speak the word of God over their lives. My God. And that's what we as leaders, that's what we as the body of Christ, is because when Jesus come, no man know the day, nor the hour. So we got to live like every day is our last day. We got to stop playing games. Stop pretending that we're one thing and we know mighty well we ain't the right. We got to be truthful with people on what we see. They may not always be in agreement. They may not always like it, but at least you as a leader, at least you as a man and a woman of God, you gave them the truth. You told them what they needed to hear and so the blood is not on your hands. But if you see it and you don't say nothing about it the blood is on your hands we got to be prepared and verse 13 says but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved we got to endure we got to stop worrying about how people feel about us and what people think and we got to tell people the truth i don't care who they are in your life i don't care who they say they are if you see something that's not lining up with the word of god you got to prepare them and say no that is not lining up with the word of god no you got to pull that in no you got to stop fabricating that story you got to stop lying about that and you got to get it together i was telling a young lady today i say nobody can change it uh, but you uh, but i can can tell you uh, this is what it is what i see i can tell you that what i see is not lining up with the word of god and i want you to tell me the same thing i don't think you love me if you're gonna let me just walk around and pretend and 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 fabricate and lie and look like i'm doing something and i ain't doing it you don't love me. Ain't no way you're going to tell me that you love me when you see my life is not lining up with the word of God. That means I won't be prepared. I need you to tell me every day if I'm doing something wrong according to the word of God. Be prepared. We have to prepare one another. We have to line up the word of God according to what he's saying. Because I promise you, Jesus is soon to come. When you really look at what's happening, how people are loving each other according to their flesh and not according to the word of God. How people are coming at each other. My God, and I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about those that are in the body of Christ. Those that are in the 
the church. My God. And they just doing it the way they think they want to do it. And they lining it up the way they want to think they want to line it up. And one thing the enemy is don't care. He don't care if you go to church and go to Bible study and do all of that. He don't care if you preach a good word. As long as you not living right. As long as you not preaching a word that's going to help people get set free and delivered. A word that's not going to prepare them for the coming of the Lord. That they may line their life up. Because in the end we have to realize that this is not between us and the enemy. This thing is between God and the enemy. And in the end God is going to win. So I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to prepare my body. I'm going to prepare my walk according to the word of God. Because I promise you as sure as this word is written as we have seen in time past that it's going to come to pass it's coming to pass so we got to be prepared my prayer today is that you be prepared uh, through the word of God that you get into this 24th chapter and you come and go along with us and then we'll be going to other scriptures uh, throughout the word of God uh, so that we all can be prepared so when he come uh, we are ready because I promise you he's coming back uh, for a church without spot or wrinkle. Uh-uh, don't be talking about it's just a little smudge. It's just no, he's not accepting that. He's not accepting just a little smudge. He's not accepting your halfway doing stuff. He's not accepting because you thought you was only human. He's not accepting none of that. He wants a church without spot or wrinkle. My God. He says, and he that shall endure to the end. That means there's a lot of things uh, that are going to yet come at us. uh, But you got to endure. We got to hold on. uh, We got to be prepared. So he's already letting you know you're going to have to endure. So be prepared to endure. Be prepared to deal with it. He says, you're like sheep uh, amongst wolves so he's letting us know in the body of Christ just hold on I'm coming but as we look at the news we realize he's closer now than ever so it's up to you to realize your place in the body of Christ to realize your the timelines of the word of God I don't hear this preached anywhere. I don't hear it's preached that Jesus is coming back uh, and he's coming back for a church. I don't hear it preached uh, that the fornication, the adultery, the lying, the stealing, the deceitfulness has to be put away. I don't hear that preached as much. So I am here, the Kingdom Cometh radio broadcast. Uh, I want to keep you lined up and keep you reminded uh, that this word is so real that he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle and just because you say it's okay and just because the world says it's okay no it's not okay in the church so we got to prepare ourselves to get into the word of God and do it the way he says do it prepare yourself to do what God says do according to his word according to what he has ordained be prepared and endure to the end come on you're going to be delivered. You're going to persecute it. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be scandalized. It's stuff that's going to happen. My God, as it is happening, stop complaining. Stop being, oh, woe is me. And realize that it's all for the grace of God. It's preparing you to meet him. Get in his word. Hold on and pray. My God, because show sure enough, he's coming back. He's coming back. And if you just endure to the end, my God, come on, come on, repent quickly. Get yourself lined up with the word of God because he's coming back real soon. Now, I thank God for this word on today. I thank God for you listening in on today. I thank God. I want you all just to prepare. Amen. In the future, we want to get other uh, speakers out here so we can discuss the word of God so we can go forth on the word of God so we can have a discussion uh, my God so that we can keep the people abreast uh, of what's taking place in the earth uh, and what God word is saying because he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle all right will you be prepared that's my prayer that you be prepared 
You have been listening to the Kingdom Cometh Radio Broadcast. I am your host, Apostle Cheryl Burke of Ambassadors of Integrity and Power Internet International Ministries, where we are building kingdom leaders on the Kingdom Influencers Radio. If this message has empowered you, subscribe to our broadcast and visit us at www.linktree forward slash B-U-R-K-E-S-E-S-S-5 to connect to our many websites. Also, visit www.kingdominfluencesnetwork.com You have been listening to The Kingdom Cometh Radio Broadcasts.